Hi, I'm Pete. And I'm Alex. And between the two of us, we know a little something about cheetahs. For instance, look at what's happening in this shot. What you see is a big cat chasing its prey. But what we see is one of the most highly engineered predators on the planet. Think of it this way. There's a huge difference between this and this. Everything about a cheetah is built for speed. That's the cheetah's advantage as a predator. Without the speed, there'd be no dinner. It's all about adaptation. Going from the base model to something designed for one purpose, high speed pursuit. High torque engine, performance handling, aerodynamic, sleek and beautiful. Sounds like my cheetahs. Check it out. A cheetah's chest is supersized with room for an extra large heart and lungs, which generates power for the muscles. The legs are long and slender with extended tendons. And those tendons really kind of act like shock absorbers. Keep in mind that the cheetah really needs the performance handling package. Most kinds of cats, like this vicious animal here, have retractable claws, but not the cheetah. A cheetah's claws are fixed, just like an athlete's cleats. Traction helps with control. But to move at really fast speeds, you have to be aerodynamic. You've got to be able to cut through the wind like a knife. And that explains the cheetah's head. It's noticeably smaller than other cats. It's almost as if the head was shaped in a wind tunnel. Shh, he doesn't like to talk about his little head. He's kind of sensitive. Sorry. But look how beautiful that head is. Those very distinctive black stripes under the eyes, they absorb the sunlight and prevent it from getting reflected in his eyes. Combine that with those gorgeous spots for an air of camouflage, mix all that together with his speed, you have one of the world's most fearsome predators. Now let's talk about steering. Not this kind of steering. This kind of steering. If I move this boat rudder in this direction, the boat heads off over here. But if I move it back over here in this direction, well, you get the picture. A cheetah's tail works much in the same way as a boat rudder does. All right, sit up. By swinging the tail from one side to the other, a cheetah is able to make quick maneuvers at high speeds. So, as the gazelle is zigging and zagging, the cheetah is able to stay in hot pursuit. Speaking of pursuit, you might think the subject of speed is pretty obvious. A cheetah's legs are moving faster than those of its prey, right? Well, let's put the obvious to the test. Watch as Pete runs. His legs are moving really fast, but in short strides. Now, here's the same run, but Pete's taking long strides. Look at the results. The run with the fewer, longer strides clearly produces the best speed. And that's the cheetah's real secret for conquest. Big strides. The cheetah spine is extra long, super flexible, and easily the most muscular part of their body. It's the spine that allows all four feet to leave the ground at once. In fact, cheetahs are actually airborne half the time they're running. Yes, it turns out that all the power comes at a price. To run at full speed, cheetahs generate heat. A lot of heat. It's no different than if I race this engine at full throttle. Do it for too long, and things start to overheat and break down. It's the same principle for cheetahs. Air intake goes from 20 breaths per minute to 160. Meanwhile, the internal temperature climbs as high as 105 degrees Fahrenheit, dangerously close to brain damage. Which means a cheetah's good for about 400 to 600 yards, and then that's it. Stop or blow the engine. Now you know the strengths and the weaknesses of cheetah power. Now as for us, I know cheetahs might need a rest, but I'm ready for another spin. Hit it. <laughs>